Okay, have you got some points yet? Yeah. Thinking about it? So what does it look like? Well, you know what x squared looks like, right? So you've got your, you've got your shape like that. Now if you take, just get some values, right? And take the cube root of each of these values, right? What kind of behavior does it exhibit? Well, it'll look like this. Okay, does that, does that match what you're looking at? Um, if you think about it this way, okay? If you took, you've got x squared that looks like this, okay? If you take the square root of x squared, the square root of x squared, you actually go to this, you get to absolute value, okay? But if you take the cube root, okay, you're making it even shallower. Does that make sense? And if you took the fourth root, it would be even shallower still. So that's why you've got this curve action happening, okay? Now what's going on? Again, there's a change in the sign of the derivative, right? You can see it. Negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. Now when I ask the question, uh, what is the derivative at the origin? Okay, well, I can, um, you can look at it and say, well, it looks a bit weird. But I can, you can do more than that. You can actually tell me what is the derivative of the cube root of x squared. We can work this out. How do we do it? It's 2 plus times the x to the minus of the third. Okay, now, let's rewrite this in index form to make it a little easier for us. Because taking a cube root is just x to the power of a third. Right? So if you remember your index laws, a cube root of x squared is just 2 times a third. So 2 thirds. Okay? So now when we find our derivative, this is just a power, right? So that's going to be the coefficient out the front. And then you reduce the power by 1. And now you can see where the problem has crept in. Okay? Because this negative sign is really short for, you know, go on the denominator. Right? So this is 2 over 3, the cube root of x. So when you look at this, you're like, well... The derivative dy dx is not defined, that's what I've written here, very important point. The derivative is not defined at the origin. What's the derivative there? It doesn't have one. Okay? Uh, and for the same reason as we looked at before, as you take the limit of the derivative from the bottom and from the top, you get completely different values. Okay? So therefore, this is not a stationary point, but it is a turning point. Okay? Alright. Now. I was so, let's just review what's a turning point. It's where, um, you know, the function turns, okay? Um, or the sign of the derivative changes on either side, okay? Number one, you can find stationary points that are turning points. And number two, you can find turning points that aren't stationary points, okay? Weird. I should have drawn a better Venn diagram the first time, okay?